Hey y'all, how y'all been doing? Well, I got a special treat for y'all today. Today we're going to, I'm going to show you how to brew your own beer. Uh, using all grain. Now, there's basically two types of ways you can do it. You can use extract. They got a lot of those extract kits at your home brew store. You can do all grain. Kind of on a smaller scale with the big breweries do. Uh, a lot of people, bitter snot, are like, oh, all grain is the only way to go. Well, I'll tell you, Earl Brewer's beer, and it does both. I mean, if I ain't got a lot of time, I'll do some extract. It's still going to make some great beer. I guarantee it. When I got a little extra time, you know, hell, I like to uh, do all grain. So, uh, also, I mean, hell, I got to give a shout out to Craig Tube. If you haven't already, look up Craig Tube on the YouTube. Uh, he's got a lot of great brewing videos, mostly uh, extract, but it, it, it's great. He's a good man. And without further ado, let, let's, let's show you all what we have here. All right, what I got here is just a basic, basic 10 gallon brew kit right here uh, all it is two uh, 10 gallon water coolers with little attachments at the bottom one is going to be for our uh, sparging tank and then uh, we'll get all into that later on and I'll explain it all and then right here is our mash tun that's where we're going to put our greens a little mash up for a little while we got here we got a little five gallon carboy uh, we got a siphon tube and we got our grains right here. And what I got here, we're gonna make a wheat, basic wheat ale. I uh, might make it a cherry tart, but we'll figure that later on. But we got five pounds of wheat, uh, two pounds of two row barley. And that's your basic, two row barley is your basic base grain. You can use it in pretty much any beer you do. And then we got a uh, one pound of care pills and one pound of munich and right here we got our hops the pellet hops we'll show you all that later on but we got the amarillo they're going to give us that citrusy flavor that we're going to want along with their cherry tart and then what i use if you got city water i mean it's got a lot of chlorine in it but what i use is uh mineral water or spring water if you're using city water, you got a lot of chlorine. I tell you what, you brew with that, your beer's probably gonna taste like band-aids. Don't tell me how I know what band-aids taste like, but so we got our grains, and right here I just I just brewed it up. So what we use for a mash water, what we're gonna soak our grains in, uh, we got three gallons of water and i brought it up to 162 degrees the reason i did that is because when we add that to grain it's going to bring us to our uh 148 degree mash temperature but let me let me tell you a little about mash temperatures all right 146 to 150 degrees mash temps there's more for your lagers your budweiser uh got a little, lot less body but it's got a lot more alcohol so it just all depends on what you want to do and then uh, for your higher ones I mean generally you probably want to use that for your stouts like kind of Guinness your pale ales you have a lot more full body beer a little bit of less alcohol content and that comes on down to how the temps break down the uh, sugars so uh, <clears throat> now what I do to calculate my water volume and uh, water temperature, I just go online and use a calculator. I mean, I, I could show you all how to use it formally, but hell, that'd be a whole different video. But uh, without further ado, uh, we're gonna add our, ma our uh, grains to the mash water. And we're gonna let it sit for about an hour, and I'll show you all how we do that here in a sec. But uh, we'll find a camera. I don't have a camera guy right. 
double check what I, I got a little thermometer right here. Just want to double check the temperature. Oh, that's good. That's 162 degrees right on the dock. Come on, right in. Be careful, though. It's hot. Don't burn yourself. Stir your grains in nice and slowly. Not too slow, you don't want it to cool down too much. Just stir as you pour. Stir as you pour. Oh man, it smells good, I tell you what. And just double check your temperature. You want to be sure it's right. Tell you what, that's 148 degrees on the dot. That's how good it all is. I mean, you've been doing this a while. We're gonna do put the cap on. We're gonna sit for about an hour. So that's the time you can go work on some stuff, work on some projects, drink some beer, now, whatever you want to do. You got a little bit of time. So we'll get back with you when it's done. I'll show you the next few steps. Hey y'all, how you been doing? We're back now. We're about to start sparging this mass. I'm mean, the mass process finished. I'm a firm believer that you should celebrate each time you finish a process. And hell, Conway Tweedy, he's like, well, hell, bring me down. Maybe. So we're not for do, we'll do a little we'll celebrating. Then we'll show you what we got going on next. You ready? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, it's my beauty. It's early. Yeah, yeah. Let's do this. Tweety. All right. So I, I went up. Right here's our, our sparge, sparge tank I talked about earlier. Now we got here is five and a half gallons of 170 degree water. And like I said, you calculate those volumes and temperatures. Just go use the online calculator. It's, I ain't too good at math. I mean, hell, I've got a third grade education. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna run this hot water over our grains here. I mean, I'll, I'll let you see what we got here. So those are our grains. We're gonna take our, our hose that's connected right there. We're just gonna run it. We're gonna try to make this process last about 45 minutes. We wanna, wanna spark it nice and slow. And uh, see my sparse tank up there on paint cans? Well, I'll tell you what. Sparse tanks are kind of like MREs. You know how the MREs, you put them on a rock or something? Well, hell, I put my sparse tanks on a paint can or something. Well, hell, whatever you can find. I mean, it's up to you. Get creative. Without further ado, let's get this started. All right, first thing we're going to do we're gonna run a little bit from the mass tank into here and pour it over the top. What it's gonna do is get more of those impurities out so you don't have a, a bunch of stuff in your brew. Now you probably can't see it, but the first couple of runs you're gonna have a lot of crud in there. So after you run a few times, it's gonna clear up. Pour that right back in there. Now what we're going to do, what I want to do is have the flow from the strike tank 
We bought the same flows the uh, stuff coming out of the mass ton. What that's going to do is give you maximum time for that hot water to stay in those grains and rinse them free. And get all those fermentable goodies. And what I usually do, usually have a bunch of grain on the sides of the, the mash tun. So what I do is I just take a spot, I wash that water level, see if it's going up or down, I adjust until it stays the same. That way you ain't got to be here all day. You know, I'm trying to spar it. But, uh, we're going to do this for about 45 minutes. What we're doing is running it down into our pan here. Our boiling pot. I don't know if you all can see it right there. Hold on now. Right now we got a we got a real slow flow coming out. We got to adjust it pretty nice. So once you fill this up, we throw it on our propane burner there. And I'll get back with you as soon as uh, we get to that point and I'll show you where we go from there. Hey y'all, we're all back now. We got the, uh, we got our wart. That's what we drained out of the uh, mash tun. We sparged out. But we got it up nearly to a boil here. So I'll guide you all through the process. But come on over here, we got it boiling. What you want here is a nice rolling boil, not, not too violent because uh, if you do that you're going to burn up your beer and you're going to have an overflow and it's going to be a big old mess. I mean, but you don't want that. But I'll, I'll show you what we're going to do here. Right now we got our Amarillo hops, like I said. So let, let's talk a little about uh, hops. So you got aroma and flavor additions. So if you all know you boil something long enough, you ain't gonna have them taste to it. You have aroma though. So when we first start a boil, I'm gonna add one ounce of these Amarillo hops in, and that's gonna contribute to the aroma. And then later on near the end, we'll add in our uh, flavor. What the hops are going to contribute to our flavor. I mean, uh, still I'm using Amarillo hops. I mean, you can use all kinds, but uh, this is why I use them. You, you all watch right here. Hold on. So when you put your first addition in, you all be nice and careful because you watch. Put them in, it's going to boil up. It's going to foam right up. Give it a minute, it will foam up, I guarantee it. See it? So I pour them in nice and slow. So what we're gonna do We're gonna let this boil nice and rolling boil for an hour. And about the last 15 minutes, I'm gonna add in my flavor profile hops. And then after that. Uh, we'll get to the cooling process and I'll get back with you when we get there. Alright then. Hey y'all, welcome back. Well, now we did our full boil. The last uh, 10 minutes I ate in those hops like I said I would. And then uh, once you're done boiling for an hour, now you gotta cool it down. You gotta cool it down fast. You don't cool it down fast enough that gives uh, all those yucky back, other bacteria to get in there. Um, and you don't want that. You want to cool it down as quickly as possible so you can transfer it into your sanitary carboy and let your fermentation start. And we'll get to that too. But uh, there's many ways to do it. Some people use uh, wart chillers. Uh, they also got, the, those just hook into your garden hose and it runs cool water through your brew. I'll show you one. I got a crappy one over here I made. Uh, so they look a little bit like this right here. Little garden hose or whatever attached to it. Uh, a lot smaller tubing on the ones you buy at the store. And they work a hell of a lot better. Cause I tell you what, I'm, Earl made this one. I mean, I tell you what, this thing about as worth as his titties on a boar hog. I tell you what, I mean, hell, that's, that's my daddy. he tell you the same thing, God bless his soul. 
saw people, fill up the bathtubs with some water, and uh, put a bunch of ice in it and set it down in there. That, that's a quick way to do it. A little bit more work, uh, but don't get confused. Just because you put it in the tub, don't mean it's going to be some bathtub gin. Uh-uh. Uh-uh-uh. My well, daddy used to do that making the moonshine back in the day. Uh, but here I'll show you what we got over here. What I chose to do, I got this big ass freezer over here. So I said, what the hell? I'm brewing right here. I just throw it up on the freezer. I want to cool it down to room temperature. And hell, I guess the freezer probably work real quick. Let's we'll see what we got here. Actually, I'll just take the camera with me so you can get a good, good look. So right here, I mean, hell, this is a big ass freezer. Um, so you see I put some plywood in there, cause uh, that bad boy is pretty heavy. So you don't want it collapsing in and spilling everywhere. Uh, right down there, that's uh, that's Christmas turkey, well half of them. He's about 33 pounds after I processed them, but yeah, right here, you set it in here, and hell, this one, it's already got a thermometer on there. I mean, it's a little worn out, but you can see better day. It's pretty hot right now. We just keep it in there for a while. Keep on watching. As soon as it gets down to room temperature, well, hell, then, uh, then we're going to transfer it into our carboy. We're going to add our yeast, and I'll show you that when we get there. And we're just going to let it ferment. So we'll get back with you as soon as it's nice and cool. And, uh, Hell, that's all there is to it. Now, I tell you, I, I guarantee you I'm leaving out some steps, maybe some specifics. Hell, there's people who do it differently. But this is how Earl does it. Great beer, every time. Guaranteed. Earl guarantees it. But hell, you got any questions, just uh, shoot me a message, comment, or post down below. But uh, we'll be back with you in a few.